audience? Young women between the ages of 25 and... And, and what's your message for them? Specifically, if it's beauty and sure, uh, women, women, period. Thank you. Empowerment. That you can do whatever you put your mind to. That you can be independent. That you can love the life of your dreams. You can take risks. Those, those are all encompassing. Let's say a talk to these people and take charge of your life. Okay. And then, how did you come to believe that? How did you come to this place of teaching people how to take charge of your life? Well, there was a defining moment. Mm -hmm. I remember coming home one day, and my father said, Monica? And he called me. And you know, when your mother or father call you, there's a certain tone they have that you know it's serious, and you mean business, and they mean business. And that day, my father had a conversation with me. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you to start from that place. Okay, just start from the conversation. No, from what or how I started it. I'm going to ask you, mm -hmm. oh, what are you speaking on? What is it that you help women to do? I don't want you to say that power, that's too general. Right. And, and you say, Les, you know, one day I, I came home when my father called my name. And it was a tone that was different. I lived with my father. And he called me, Monica? And I said, yes, Dad. He said, I need to talk to you. And when he said that, I knew that it was serious. And I went in, and he told me some things. And as a result of the, you know, so going to that conversation, as a result of that, I had to take charge of my life. Up to that point, I was depending on him. I knew he had my back. But he, he wanted me to soar, you know, eagles, mm -hmm. they, they take the little eaglets after they get to a certain age and they throw them out of the nest. And they swoop down and catch them and they throw them again so they can find the strength to fly under with the strength of their own wings. Okay? okay. How many minutes should that be? We're going to flow. Okay, because I, okay, okay, fine. Okay, let me know when y'all ready. Yes. Ready the camera's running? The camera's running. Les Brown and Monica, take one. You have something special. You have greatness within you. Hello, my name is Les Brown, and today I have the pleasure of talking with Monica. And Monica Green is a person, she's an entrepreneur, she is a speaker, she's a trainer, she's a life coach, and she's my very good friend, and I'm very proud to be able to talk with her about the goal and commitment of her life in speaking. Hello, Monica, how are you? I'm good. How it's good. always a treat with great people <laughs> meet. So you do it to do things with your life. So tell me, who do you see as your primary audience of people that you speak to? I speak to young women who are uh, between the ages of 25 and, say, 45 women who are in the middle of transition or desiring to, to move their life from one place to the next. And what do you speak to them about? My message is around the fact that you can do whatever you put your mind to if you do the right things and... Uh, la, 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 la. Those are, I gave you a time. I know. I Take, charge Take charge of your life. Take charge of your life. So what do you speak to them about? About taking charge of their lives. A lot of times, as women, um, our nature is to want to be secure. And sometimes we put our dependency on things other than ourselves. And so my message is all about you can do this, you can take charge of your own life. When did you come to that place? Is there something that you can look back on that triggered that kind of mindset? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I used to live with my father uh, right after high school. And my dad and I were very, very close. And I depended on him greatly. I remember specifically this one day walking into the house and when your dad calls your name, I know when my father called my name, it's like sh you know shattering. You could you know the tone of your father's voice, and he said Monica before I could even reach my bedroom door. My stomach said, "Ooh, that's a serious call." Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I needed to be going in the direction in which that voice was, not just saying yes, but I did say, "I said yes, Daddy." He said, "Come here," just as I thought. I need to talk to you for a minute. And so as I entered into the room, it was a real still, like I could almost remember it like yesterday, it was real still. 
And my dad is a cool kind of dude, so for him to be real stoic at that table, I'm like, ooh, okay. So I slid in and sat down next to him. And he said, yeah, um, Monica, I want to talk to you about a couple things. And one of the things, uh, at that moment, he picked up the calendar. And so I'm like, okay, well, hey. He said, uh, yeah, baby, I've, I've been doing some thinking, and I think it's time for you to fly. So I got excited, okay, like new car, new, you know, <laughs> I didn't know yeah. what was going on. Uh -huh. But I just figured he was going to do something for time me. For you to fly. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. said it's time for you to fly. And my father took care of me, so I, I knew it was something good. Yeah. But I, I leaned in because he was so serious. Mm -hmm. He said, well, baby, I, he said, I've been thinking about some things. And he said, you know. That hair in your eye, that's uh, driving me crazy. No, that's driving me crazy, too. Good. Put a hairband on. Why did you do that? Right. She's doing great. She's doing, she doing, doing great. But they can't even Let, see that hair. Don't worry about a handsome style. Now. Because she's already turned to the side. This right. camera isn't catching. We got two views. This, this camera right. isn't catching at all. Okay, go ahead. Finish that. Well, okay, start, start from. Can, can you see the hair when it comes down? I can feel it, but it's not going to hurt me. Okay, good. Okay, good. It's All a right. great thing. I'm here. Okay, good. Okay, uh, take, <laughs> take three. And when I sat down, he, he had this calendar in his hand. And he said, you know, baby, um, it's time for you to fly. And so he looked at the calendar, and I looked at the calendar. He said, I'm going to give you about 30 days. And I'm like, okay. And my gut stomach going, he said, I'm going to give you 30 days, Monica. He said, it's time for you to fly, and I think it's time for you to get your own place. Mm. So I had a poker face. Well, first of all, do y'all have any disputes or arguments up to that point? No. I was in school. You just came out of the pool. <laughs> you were in school. I was in college. My sister and I lived there together. My sister wasn't even in college. She was, she was, she was just chilling. I was in college and I was uh, working. I, I was a hairstylist. So if I wasn't in school, I was in college doing my work and then on the weekends I would hang out. But no, it was a total shock to me. I later found out why, but at that okay. moment. It was a shock. Yeah, I was, I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at him like, yeah. Okay, something's going on. Something ain't right. I, you know, drinking or I mean, really? you know, drunk no. But I, did, I just didn't understand. So I had mixed emotions. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, it was like my dad let me, he dropped me in my mind, in my heart. Because if my father didn't have me, I just, you know, who else would? So I left out of that space with him. And I didn't, I didn't tell him, I didn't have the guts to tell him because I loved him so much. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want him to even know I felt like that. Yeah. So I, but at the same time, it was me. And I'm sitting there thinking like, what am I gonna do? And so I walked out the room and, actually I walked in my sister's room and she was underneath the dryer. And so I was, I was like, Keisha, Keisha, what's going on? What's wrong with your father? I ain't even <laughs> my father. Right. I said, he just gave me 30 days. And she said, huh? <laughs> And probably because she was thinking like, I sure don't need him to call me down there. <laughs> 30 days. She wasn't working or she was in school. So she's like, I don't know. And so I went back into my room and I sat on the bed. And at that moment, when you say the defining moment, I said, wow, Monica, you, you, you got to do this yourself. You, you, you got to figure it out. And so my pride <laughs> said, you know what? I don't need 30 days. I'm going to figure this out before 30 days. So the next day I was up and going and within a week I had found an apartment, started furnishing it, and before the 30 days was left, you know, my, my pride invited him over so he could see everything finished and so furnished. So you took charge of your life and you left not in 30 days, but you left in a week. Yeah, I had completed everything in a week, was ready to move. I was gone before 30 days for sure. And when he came over to see your new place? He was happy. He was proud. I, I, I had a little bit of, you know, something on me because I was trying to show him I could do it and I didn't want to do it. Yeah. But I was, but he you was. You had a little attitude yeah. that, that he brought you to that place. <laughs> right. You know, Mary White has a quote that says, in life, when you don't have enough courage or insight to know, you have outgrown a situation mm -hmm. and it's time to move on. Life moves on you. Yep. Exactly. And that's what he did. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And later he was able to share with me, a couple months later, because at that moment when he came over and saw the house, he was proud. 
And he probably knew I had a little attitude. So he walked through, yeah, all right, that's my girl, that's nice, you know. But I'm like, you know, I'm still a little like, hmm, okay, what's that about? And so um, when he, uh, a, a couple months later, I think it was probably at this point, at a, at a holiday time, and he, we sat down, we talked, and he was saying to me, you know, Monica, I just wanted to make sure that you could fly. And it's very similar to, uh, I, I believe you say this a lot around about egos, and it's a true fact. Uh, when, when it's time for the egos to let their children out of the nest, they push them out. And so my father was very, very, very concerned that if anything was to happen to him, that I would be okay, that I would make it. He knew that, that our closeness, and I depended upon him so much until he wanted to make sure for himself that I was okay. So he didn't want to be an enabler. Right. Yes, and wanted you to fly by the strength of your own wings. Absolutely. So what did you discover about yourself by taking charge of your life and, 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 and how are you going to share that with women? Les, you know what, honestly, it was, I, I had so much fear growing up because of my backdrop. I was afraid all the time. So this was- What was driving that fear? Um, uh, uh, abandonment, rejection issues, I think uh, those things happened early in abandoned my life. Abandoned by? My, well, when I say abandoned, if my mother saw this tape, she would, <laughs> she would kill me if I if it was abandoned. But at the end of the day, when I was younger, I had to be very independent. Uh, at six years old, I remember waking up and my mom wasn't there. And so I, I, I was devastated. And so over time, there was a lot of consistency around that. And I had to learn how to do things on my own. So even though uh, I was doing it, I still always had that fear, this, this little fear in me. And so when, when, with my father, I didn't have that fear. I felt secure. Okay, let's back up. Because mm -hmm. that's two stories. No. Uh-huh. The, when, I, when I was coming, I, I came up with a lot of fear, mm -hmm. a lot of uncertainty of, of, of that I had in my life. I had to learn at a very young age how to become independent. Okay. And my mother wasn't there. And she did the best that she knew how. And so I had to grow up fast. And I learned at five how to fix pancakes, <laughs> how to dress myself how to do my hair to the best that I could. I probably looked very funny going to school. I remember seeing a picture and all the kids' hair looked well groomed and I saw my hair, it was a hot mess, you know? <laughs> but I learned how to become responsible, how to take charge. And, and many women, women, the mothers, they, they, okay, I gotta find it. Many people don't come up in households where you have someone that teach you how to be responsible, how to have structure. Many times, uh, the, the most of the households in, in our community, they are headed up by women, over 80%. And so the maid, well, the breadwinner, and they come home and tired and wild. Many times, children, we have to fend for ourselves. And so I learned some things, and that's what I'm sharing with women. Okay. You see? Mm -hmm. Because I don't want it to be embarrassing for her. Right. That's what I was saying. So I'm trying to think of another she way. Was, to... She was a single mom, so she was always she's at work. She was a single mom. Mm -hmm. She's always at work and possessed. And I had to step up. Right. And as a single mom, how many kids? Two. Single mom of two kids. I was the oldest. And mom went to work, and I had to step up. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. So there are things that happen to us in life that cause us to become who we become as adults. And so when you look at your life, tell me a defining moment that caused you to take charge of yourself and become more responsible as a young person. Well, that's my, my mom was a single mom, so I grew up in a single mother household, and she always had to work. I remember at five years old, as a matter of fact, uh, waking up and she wasn't she wasn't there, and I had to fix my own pancakes, get myself dressed for the daycare bus, and do my own hair. 
Mm. And so I just had to figure it out. And I had to step up because she was busy. I had a younger sister whom I had to be responsible for, which she didn't come until I was 10. But even at 10 years old, I was Santa Claus, I was Easter Bunny, I was all of those things for her. Yeah. So it, 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 it meant that I had, to, I had to take charge and step up. But at the same time, it was, it was scary. As a young as a young girl by yourself, so yes, and so today, today's women they are in an environment where there's no such thing as job security, mm -hmm. and quite a few are in relationships with what I call sperm donors, and they have no help for the children, and don't have the financial assistance that they need. So, you know from your experience being raised by a single mother. What are the things that you're sharing with them on what's necessary to take charge? The first thing is, is that you have to push past your fear. You have to believe in yourself and get a vision for what it is that you want. And even when you can't see it or you don't know how it's going to happen, just keeping the faith and pushing through, learning how to become self-motivated. Uh, putting things into your mind that's going to take your mind from where you are to where you need to be. So there's a lot of in-depth in internal work that has to be done in order for you to become consistent and begin to see yourself the way you would like to be versus the way you are. That's in alignment with what Earl Nightingale said, that you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. So working on yourself. What's the next step that's important in taking charge of your life? The next step is consistency. Once you get a vision of who you are, consistently being be, being able to stay true to that no matter what. So sometimes there's sacrifices that you have to make. Sacrifices around going out and partying, sacrifices around not nothing. I don't know if it's really a sacrifice, but it's a discipline that you have to take charge of because if you know where you want to go, there's certain people you just can't have in your life. They're not good for you. You have to have a good assessment of that so that you're always thinking about where you're going. Will this get me where I'm going or will this slow me down? And that's a constant, every day, every minute, every second by second uh, piece that you must have around your decision making because the choices that you make will determine a lot of the outcomes. And so knowing yourself well enough to know what you need to do for you to protect that vision that you, that you have for yourself that you want to become. You and I have had some conversations about being independent and and earning your own money. Tell us about that. What do you share with women in terms of creating more value and financial independence for themselves? I think it's imperative, um, especially around uh, the fact that women like to be secure. My father used to always say to me, Monica, don't let the little trinkets get you caught up because women get caught in trinkets. You want to get the real thing. You want to get the real diamond, the real gold. And his analogy was really around go to work and do what you have to do for yourself because then when you get ready to make that purchase, and what purchase is not necessarily in material things, but when you get ready to make that purchase on your decisions for your life, it will be solid and, 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 and you can do those things for yourself. So what did you do? I chose, well, it was actually was not even a choice at the, at, at initially. My gift was doing hair. I used to do my cousin's hair, and I just used to do hair all the time at home. And so when we moved from Cleveland to Chicago, my mother got a job in Chicago. Uh, as I said, she was a single mom. And when we moved to Chicago, she put me in a vocational program, a cosmetology vocational program, and I was able to obtain my license right out of high school, so I did hair. And so then you went from becoming a hairstylist to owning your own salon and an entrepreneur in a variety of areas. Mm -hmm. And so if people have an interest in bringing you in to speak to them, how can they get in touch with you? They can email me at monica at monicadgreen.com or call me at 216-244-2749. And once again, the topic that you speak on? Is? Take charge of your life. Take charge of your life. Okay, and once again, oh, the, all right, hold okay, on. I got you. Take time. And, and once again, the topic that you speak on? Take charge of your life. Her name is Monica Green. She has energy and passion. She will custom design a presentation for your next convention or your next conference, and she will make you look real good. Monica Green, take charge of your life. You have something special. You have greatness in you. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it.
I see, I see what you're doing. 